I have a reading from Romans um, second chapter from one and um, it's from the message Bible first of all I just want to say good evening to all out there and I really and truly miss you guys and um, I just want to say God bless you guys all right and um, the reading is like I said from Romans second chapter in Romans and it starts from verse one um, this when I read this it was kind of like um, really like the words in there they are words that we normally use to each other on a daily basis most times that each other we understand each other and um, it's like I said it's from the message Bible and I just want to share it with you guys out there um, maybe someone will understand it better to read it in a different version and that's the reason I'm reading it and again it's just a lot of wisdom in there things that we should understand not just hearing it and not understanding it but understanding it and doing what it says so um the heading for this it says god is kind but not soft and it starts from verse one those people are on a dark spiral downward but if you think that leaves you on a high ground where you can point your fingers at others think again every time you criticize someone you condemn yourself it takes one to know one judgmental criticism criticism of others is well known which is a way of escaping detection in your own crimes and misdemeanors but God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. You don't think? Sorry, let me take that back. You didn't think, did you? That just by pointing your finger at others, you would distract God from seeing all your misdoing and from coming down on your heart. Or do you think that because he's such a nice God, he lets you off the hook? Better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but he's not soft. In kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. You're not getting by with anything. Every refusal and avoidance of God adds fuel to the fire. The day is coming when it's going to blaze hot and high. God's fiery and righteous judgment. Make no mistake. In the end, you get what's coming to you. Real life for those who work on God's side. But to those who who insist on getting their own way and take the path of least resistance, fire to them. If you go against the grain, you get splinters. Regardless of which neighborhood you're from, what your parents taught you, what school you attend, but if you embrace the way of God, does things, there are wonderful payoffs. Again, without regard to where you are from or how you were brought up. Being a Jew would give you an automatic stamp of approval. God pays no attention to what others say or what you think about you. He makes up his own mind. If you sin without knowing what you're doing, God takes that into account. But if you see knowing full well what you're doing, that's a different story entirely. Merely hearing God's law is a waste of time, of your time, if you don't do what he commands. Doing, not hearing, is what makes a difference with God. When outside, when Outsiders who have never heard of God's law follow it more or less by instinct. They confirm its truth by their obedience. They show that God's law is not something alien imposed on us from without, 
but woven into the very fabric of our creation. There is something deep within them that echoes God's yes and no, right and wrong. They respond to God's yes and no will become public knowledge on the day God makes its final decision about every man and woman. The message from God that proclaimed through Jesus Christ takes into account all these differences. This is the word of God. I hope you guys got something from it because I feel this reading from the Message Bible, it is just so straightforward, so well to understand. And I just felt it was a good thing to read it today. You have a wonderful night. God bless you again. Indeed, indeed. So uh, the, you, 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 the re, you read it and you said you thought it was important to read it to them and what mostly captivated you is said is the the simplicity of it and the direct yes. the direct you know it, it's so direct yes very much so nobody can say they don't understand what it's saying nobody can say it it's like you know because god really wants us to understand his words he doesn't want us to hear his word and we think well oh we don't understand or it's just some kind of foreign language to us we have to understand god's word and if you don't understand it this way you will understand in that way. And I just thought it was wonderful to, you know, read this part. It's a message from the Message Bible to read it again. Amen. And, and something that, that, was, that was taken from that in terms of the, the, the depth of the message is that um, when you mention the simplicity, God's word is really and truly supposed to be something that anybody who wants it can get it you don't have Absolutely. to be all this big educated and all this kind of stuff and and a lot of people try to put it that way that make people feel that man if i don't know what all these guys know and if i don't know all this i mean and i, I can't believe, be safe you know it's like you know what i mean like i believe seriously i mean it's good to learn and to know things educate yourself on stuff but sometimes that's the trick of the enemy because if God, because God is an all-knowing God, and if God has his people in a congregation with anybody, or even a friend talking to someone who wants to tell, tell this person about God, God knows everything. You think God will want you to open your mouth and speak to a person that they don't understand what you are saying? Our God, you know, he is such a, a, a good God. He's a loving God. And there's no way on this that I will believe that our father will want us to talk to someone and they don't understand it. There's no way possible. Amen. Amen. Or oh, for to make somebody feel that they're left out. They're left out. Or like this is way over your head. Like you cannot achieve this. And that's that's the that's the thing that that's been going on. Um if you check it out from the old days, and I want to know, I want to figure out well, how come people don't realize that they are actually trodden on the same ground that the Pharisees were trodden on. Because that kind of persona that I know it, but you don't know it. We have it right, you have it wrong. It's the same thing the Pharisees did back in the days, and God totally disapproved this kind of thing. Yes. That is why He sent this on Jesus. So when you listen to some some people, some some click, some group that yes, you have some information. Yes, you know what you know. Yes, you know. But the thing about it is, He said He's going to use the, 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 the foolish thing to come from the wise, because some people act like they know it all, and to really come and to condemn other a group of people for oh well, they worship in the wrong day, or they don't know this, and they don't know, but I know it. It's the same Pharisee's mentality. <laughs> we can know, you know, just what kids me. And also, you know, people really think that, you know, you know, sometimes we, we say things. But, I mean, as a person who's bringing out an information, bringing out information, you know the people that you're bringing the information to. And if you know you're bringing information to people that are not all where you are, to me, it's the right thing to get to a, a place to, to read to the people what they can understand. Because what sense it makes to talk to a person and they don't understand what you really what you're saying. It sounds gibberish to them. They don't understand. So it's like to me, it's stupid, foolish on your part as well to come in and speak to people that they don't understand you. 
So in other words, you, you, you're sort of lifting up yourself above. You're being very pompous. And, and you're making people <laughs> feel that you know so much, you're so educated. And it does no good for nobody because the, the Bible is very clear. And in, in terms of how God wants his projection to be felt in the world, it's like, he says, not by might, not by, not by power, but by my spirit. And I hear people use this context all the time. But what is the application of it in real, realistic life? The spirit of God is what teaches people or what draws people <laughs> the spirit onto God. leads you. The spirit yeah. leads you. So if you're gonna come in and say what you wanna say and people really don't understand anything, the spirit is not leading you, my dear. I'm very sorry to say well, that. I don't want to offend anyone, but the spirit is really not no, leading. No, but, but, but what, what? This is reality. Because <laughs> it's it, what it, it is. The Bible said, not by might, not by power. A person can, can come on the radio or talk somewhere and just say two, three words and get. 10,000 people to just follow them just yeah. because the spirit is with them the spirit is the one that do the drawing you can lift the name up but the spirit is the one that do the drawing and then and that's, that's something that people um, need to really get and understand because the more complicated you try to song or you try to present or whatever you only trying to uplift yourself you trying to make yourself look like you're this and that's why um you know this just popped in my spirit while i was talking earlier on and so too when you, somebody say them there is a puzzle them i am a puzzle or I'm a pastor, I'm a this or that. Who give you the name? How does somebody get the name? That who name you? How you know? We know the Bible says to some he give apostles, some he give this, some he give that. But how do you know that this is your name or this is your title? It's a, it's amazing. But that's a good little talk though. And <laughs> Five forty nine choice radio. Your life, your salvation, your choice. And we just having a little chit chat here with you guys I out there listening. Go ahead, baby. Yeah, I just just want to share this. Um. I don't know if everyone will maybe relate to what I have to say right now. But you know, back in the days, there were a lot of like young men that would be out there um, working really hard. Like maybe they just ha were skilled in something. Maybe they were a carpenter or whatever. And um, they would get in a relationship with some young women. And those women, they'll not be working. And this young man would, you know, take time out, the money, resources and stuff, and send this young woman to school, you know, and give them whatever they need because they're making the money, they have the money. And you find at the end of it all, when this young woman, this lady, finish the schooling, they get an education, you'll find that they're just not... <laughs> The relationship starts deteriorating. It starts going down. Like, you know, it's no more what it was before. And I was wondering, if I was young and I saw this happen. And I used to say to myself, but this person is so unfair. Why would that person do that? I mean, after all was done to that person, why would that person do that? But then as I get older, I understand that they were not on the same level. And the reason I say that is um, I brought this up just to say you have to know the level people are on how you talk to them the way you bring things across to them that they can't understand and i hope what i just said that kind of have you think to you know certain things because really and truly you know we really have to be on people's level and from that people will grow because they will want to know certain things they will grow i'm not saying that you have to say speak with all ease and ours alone and that's it but you have to understand the people that you talk to. If you want them to understand, you speak to them in ways that they will understand. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Six more minutes to the top of the hour. We're just having a little little talk. And we just, you know, flow with the spirit sometimes as it, it leads, you know, really and truly. And, you know, we are happy to be back on Choice Radio, your life, your salvation, your choice. And guys, you know, we are just so happy. I know for me, I'm just happy to be born again, happy to be a child of the King. And, and I want to tell you guys out there in Radio Land, let me tell you something. You accepted Jesus Christ, be proud that you are a child of God. That is where your fuel comes from. The word go like a boomerang and come right back to you. The more you tell people about Jesus, the more you yourself are convinced 
that you are a child of God. The more you 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 imply and then you 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 show people based on your your way you act and what you say and how you live and what you try to hold up to in life is the more it relates back to you and make you stronger in your Christian walk. So don't do it halfway. Don't do Christian halfway. Don't get caught up and tie up. You know, just try to live the best way you can that God wants you to live. And that way you are able to see God in your life. Because the thing about God, he, his word is true. What he says is what he does. And if you don't do it all the way, you do it half-heartedly, you will have a tendency to not see God in your life as you see him in other people's life. And then you, you might want to get jealous. No, don't get jealous. To whom much is given, much is required. What you put in is what you get out. So I'm just encouraging you guys all day, each and any, every one of us, let's try to live for God. Let's do it right. Let's do God. Let's do Jesus. Let's, let's make him proud. Let's commit ourselves. Let's submit ourselves to the things that God wants us to do with our life that he can really truly show up in our life and give us the victory that we truly deserve that we can continue to serve him you know what i mean there is times i myself yes the, and the deeper you get with god trust me the devil will throw all kinds of things your way to try to, to to see if they could soften you but you know what happened for me is the stronger it make me believe and to know that well this thing is really good because when I was out in the world, I never used to have all this kind of different kind of problem. But now I'm having all this kind of thing showing from the left, from the right. Guess what? you even making me even stronger. You're really validating that God is and serving God is good. And I will encourage you to do right unto the Lord. Especially the things that God say he don't like. If you don't like this, don't try to live in it. Because you're going to give yourself a problem. He's going to warn you. He's going to warn you. After a while, he's going to cut off. He's going to stop telling you about it. You're going to keep going. So do right unto the Lord. Try to put yourself in the best situation. God is going to make everything work out the, the, for, for, the, to the good for those who love the Lord. And his words say that. If you love the Lord, he's going to make everything work out for your good in his due season, in his due time. Hallowed be the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. So before <laughs> before we get out, um, our brother Philip is in the building with something called Back to the Bible Way. Yeah. So um, let's give her the names that we have right here. To join with Wilbert Michelle, Alicia Gabriel, we have Latoya Oakley, hey, a winner before. Maureen Shepard, another winner again in the grand finale, Miss Beverly Bowers. And I think the name is Nola, Nola Kay Kayala. Kay if that's you, um, Nola, if that's Nola, call and just verify your name before we leave the studio. But that's the names that we have here. So, um, Wilbert Michelle, Alicia Gabriel, Latoya Oakley, Maureen Shepard, Beverly Bowers, and Nola. If, if, that's, if, if you think I'm trying to pronounce your name, then call us and just verify that name for us. So, that's the people going for the grand finale next week, the final. Um. I just want to say, Nola, I think it is. That was the person before the last person that called. So, um, like uh, my husband said, you could call back if we didn't pronounce your name properly. If that's not the right name, please call back so we can do the correction. Thank you. Amen. All right. So, definitely, indeed. So, as we get ready to leave you guys, um, it's definitely a pleasure. And we just want to say to all the saints in Radio Land, continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Continue to be strong in your Christian walk. Continue to be proud of who you are in Christ. And continue to seek the word of God. Continue to seek upliftment and development in your Christian self. Because, as I said, something I realized, a lot of people, they know what they want and they're not getting it, but they are not making a move. They don't feel they have the power. If you feel you have come to a stage in your Christian walk and you need more, you need higher heights, you need deeper depths. You need to find the place. Find the sources where it's available. Because that is your freedom. You got the freedom and liberty to seek out and search out what you need that you can see God manifest in your life. It's important that you find the right place that could feed your spirit that you can continue to develop as a child of God. There are some people they need more, more dancing, more jumping. They need more of that. Well, hey, you're good. But if you come to a place where you have already accepted Christ, now you need to be taught. 
Now you need to sit down and get the word into your bone, into your marrow, into your system that God can work through you, that you can be powerhouse, a powerhouse for the, for the living God. You don't need to be motivated anymore. You already motivated, you accepted Christ, now you need information and the way to use the information. So I'm saying this because this is our duty. We are called at this time to do this this way that people are going to see God and see God work in their life. So I'm encouraging you to seek it, find it, because those who diligently seek him will find him. Glory to the name of Jesus. You want to pray us out, baby? Yes, I will. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Heavenly Father, this beautiful day, God, that our eyes was opened. We could talk, our um, feet, we could have walked to go where we wanted to go today, God. We thank you for the food, Lord Jesus, that you have provided for each and every one of us today, God. And Heavenly Father, I pray, God, whoever out there that doesn't have a meal, something to eat, God, that you're going to make a way for that person today, God. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for just making this way for us today, that it, you make it possible that we were able to be here by your grace today God God I thank you for all our listeners all those who were listening by phone by um, radio Heavenly Father Lord Jesus or through internet God I pray Lord God that you're going to continue strengthening them and those who are looking who are searching for you that is hungry and thirsty for you God I pray Lord Jesus God that you're going to open a way for them that they will come to know you God Heavenly Father I pray that that you can have us continue having us to be a light heavenly father to the people out there god and if i pray anything that is in us that is not of you today i pray god that you remove it god and heavenly father as we are departing here from the radio but not out of your presence god we pray that you're going to continue strengthening us god in your name i pray lord jesus in your son name amen and amen amen glory to god Keep it up for Pastor. Is it Pastor or Brother Philip, right? Yeah. Brother Philip. All right, my brother. Hey guys, we love you in Jesus' name. Good night. Keep praying for us, okay? He's the King of Kings, the Almighty. He's the Lord of Lords, created you and me. The one and only God, there's no other. Yeah. One my heart and soul I give He's the one who always shows me the way Listen up to what I've got to say Who made the sun, the moon, the stars and the earth Do you remember who kept you safe until birth Gave your life to live and praise his name He is the one and the same Yes, he's the king of kings Give. Yeah. He's the one who always shows me the way. Yeah. Listen 
listen up to what I've got to say Who made the sun, the moon, the stars and the earth? Do you remember who kept you safe?